Hello, welcome back to the Cubase Fundamentals course. Uh, we're trying to figure out how to connect hardware to software at the moment. And then basically once we've got that information inside Cubase, how we can manipulate all of the various parameters and instruments inside there. In the last episode, we had a look at MIDI CC values and how useful they are in terms of controlling plugins from external hardware. And today we're going to examine the evolution of the concept that flows on from that called automation, which is a much bigger subject. There's any number of parameters in a track that can be automated and MIDI data flowing between instruments is just one small segment of a much, much bigger concept. If you're enjoying this series and you want to help support me and my channel, check out the Patreon link below. You'll be able to download copies of all of these projects as we go. The first thing that we're going to do today is convert this MIDI CC data into automation data. You can do that in one fell swoop. Let's remind ourselves what it looks like in the editor. So we've got two different kinds of MIDI um, controller data here. We've got pitch bend data, which as we discussed last time, isn't CC data. It's a bespoke and specific data type all on its own. But this stuff down here is CC 109 data. That is what we're going to convert into automation. I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to go into MIDI, Functions, Extract MIDI Automation. So this is going to perform this operation on the selected track. The Halion Sonic is the selected track. And so you can see immediately that something's happened, but it's a bit mysterious as to exactly what. Our ramps have turned green. That means they're no longer editable. This is Cubase telling us that there's MIDI CC 109 data on the track, but it's no longer stored as CC data in the part, it's stored as automation. If we right click on the track and say show used automation on the selected track, here it is, and you can see that is editable information. Hover over the control and it says MIDI channel all CC 109. Do you also note the one above? CC80. This is an artifact of the demonstration that I was giving last time. I momentarily flicked over to channel 80 and clicked with my mouse. So there is a single piece of CC data, or there was CC80 data in that part. I can now right click and remove that selected track. And that automation has just been deleted. It's been deleted off the track. All automation data is stored at the track level. So let's make this automation lane a bit bigger and have a look at it. It's exactly as it was when it was MIDI data. All of these lines are all horizontal. And at the moment, there's absolutely no difference between this and the old CC information. However, it is different. If I really zoom in hard, you can see that there's this little anchor point. I can pick that up and I can now generate curves with the automation. This is one immediate benefit that MIDI CC data doesn't permit. You cannot have curves inside the MIDI CC world, but here we've got automation. So it's already a superior tool set. We've got all of the other functionality, do all of the same kind of things with tilting and scaling. and All of that stuff is exactly the same. So here's our MIDI part. Here's the automation data in the last couple of bars, just like it was. What's going to happen if I pick this part up and move it onto the piece piano track up above. Well, the automation appears to have disappeared, but if I right click and say, show used automation, here it is. The automation has followed the MIDI part. That's because we have automation follows events set. If I disable that feature, and move this part back down to the Sonic track, the automation stays behind on the piece piano track. So that's showing you that automation is genuinely at the track level and by convention or by default, because I've got that option set, the two stick together. I can't, I can't remember the last time I turned that off. Automation follows events is pretty much what you're gonna want the vast majority of the time in my opinion. Let's have a look back at the Halion instrument. Here we've got our envelope knob and you can see the CC data. I'll just cycle around those last three bars. I'm gonna press play, let's see what happens. See the knob moving in Halion? It's still tracking that data. 
So even though we've converted it from CC data into automation, Halion still understands what it is. That's because there is a link between automation and MIDI data. For every MIDI CC value, for each one of those 128 CC data slots there are, there's an equivalent automation lane. So when we converted this CC data into automation, it's still generating MIDI CC data. I can prove that by inserting a MIDI monitor on the track. So when it gets to bar 27, here's all the CC 109 data flowing through the track. Now that's where the world between CC and automation gets woolly because it seems like it's doing the same job, but it isn't. That's a function of the way that automation has been developed in Cubase, that these automation tracks that are specifically designated as MIDI CC automation tracks understand MIDI CC data. I'm going to decouple it completely now and show that automation is genuinely a different beast. I'm going to tell Halion to forget this CC value. And so now this knob isn't attached to anything. If I press play again, now the envelope filter knob isn't moving at all. What I'm going to do now though is assign this knob to its own completely dedicated automation track that's got nothing to do with CC data. The way that we do that is we say assign to new automation. That's it done. Halion now knows, if we have a look at the automation settings, that the bright pop bell filter Enver mount is assigned to automation lane one of this instance of the instrument. And unfortunately, this next step is a little bit clunky, so please bear with me. What I need to do is generate a brand new automation lane. See down at the bottom, we've got a penned automation track. I'm going to do that. I'm going to click inside it then say more and here are all our various automation options there's absolutely masses of them but one of them is the Halion Sonic SE drill in there down into the automation bright pop bell filter Enver mount select that and say OK so this automation track down here is that single knob of that single instruments dedicated automation track. It's got nothing to do with CC data whatsoever. Unfortunately, our CC data is still on automation track 109. So we need to get that data onto this track. There's no longer anything to do with MIDI CC 109 on this track. I can right click show used automation and the 109 disappears. Let's bring our Halion instance back up. Now I'm going to press play again and you might expect this knob to move in response to the automation data but it won't. I'll show you why shortly. Okay, completely motionless. Tracks only respond to automation data if you tell them to. There's a dedicated button on the track called read automation. We need to activate that. Now when I press play there's the knob responding to the automation data. Now that's a lot to absorb. So let's just have a think about what's happened. We have an instance of a plugin, our Halion Sonic instrument. It has hundreds of controls inside it. And in fact, it's a tiny subset of parent Halion, which has thousands. There's absolutely no way that the 128 slots of MIDI CC can possibly handle all of that variety. You'd end up with multiple controls mapped to the same functions and it would be a complete nightmare. So automation is the only way that we can assign so many different controls to independent and unique lanes. But with instruments like Halion that have so many options available, they're not all baked in by default. In other plugins, you'll find that there are, when you load the instance up, immediately you get a named dedicated automation track for every single feature in the synth. That's not the case with Halion because there are simply too many. You have to specifically say, these are the assignments I want. These are the automation tracks that I'm interested in subscribing to. And so as the first step, we said, I am interested in the filter envelope knob being automated. So we assign it 
to the automation engine inside Halion. Then once we'd done that, we needed to subscribe to that automation track inside Cubase. We drill down into the Halion automation menu and we find the automation track that we're interested in. Now, as you'll see in the next episode, a lot of that clunk disappears when we introduce quick controls. Quick controls are the means by which you're supposed to interact with automation. At no point today have I physically moved any controls on any piece of equipment. That's because interacting with automation without quick controls is really hard. The only way that you can really do it is by heading into Studio Setup and physically mapping one of the controls on your hardware directly to that automation slot. So I've got here Rotary 6 on my machine. I can head into the Sonic um, SE and say the automation track bright pop filter bang and now knob number six on my machine will directly control that automation control that is not the way I recommend that you do it it's much much better to use quick controls and we'll deal with that in the next episode the other thing that I want to make very quick reference to is that we haven't discussed the automation panel today there's so much functionality inside this thing that I think that's going to need its own completely separate episode. But I think it's important we deal with quick controls next. That gets automation up and running as a genuinely useful tool. Then we'll get on to have a look at the automation panel. Thanks very much for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button if you did. I'll see you next time.